Hey there YouTube, Jonathan Silva here, trainer at Pragmatic Works, and in this video I'm going to take you through the steps on how we can go ahead and split columns using the Power Query Editor. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the Power Query Editor, look at some sample files that we can go ahead and use in order to understand all the different methods on how to split columns. All right, for our first example, let's go ahead and look at how we can split a column by delimiter. And so the column that we're going to be focusing on is this column right down the middle that holds our contact information for one of the representatives for the companies that we work with most. And so what we're going to do in order to split this column, we're going to go ahead and choose the split column by delimiter option. And when we do that, we're going to try to create two distinct columns, one for the first name and one for the last name of our contact. So if I go ahead and do a right click on our column header, I can come down here and choose to split this column by delimiter. And the delimiter that I'm going to use in this case is the space. Now you notice that Power BI has automatically looked at this column and what's existing inside of it and guessed that we're going to want to use the space as the delimiter. And so what we can do is to just simply say, we're going to split it for each occurrence of the delimiter or from the left or right most. And in this case, since we know there's only one space there, each occurrence, it really doesn't matter. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And so now what you can see is we have two distinct columns, one for first name and one for last name. And so if we want to go ahead and change the name of those to first name and last name, we can very easily do that. And so now we have our two distinct columns here, first name and last name. So if we wanted to do any reporting, based on just simply the last name of the contact that we're working with, we can now do that. All right, let's go ahead and look at our second example here in our another table there that we're gonna work with. So we have two different options here, two different columns that we're gonna be working with in order to split column. The first one is going to be on this city column. And as you notice, we're just looking at cities that exist throughout the United States. We have a couple of zip codes identifiers there to show where they are. And so for this one, what we're gonna to choose to do is split this into three different columns. One for the city, one for the state, and one for the country. So in order to do that, what we're gonna tell Power BI we wanna do is to split this column by delimiter. And the delimiter, as you again notice, Power BI and Power Query Editor have guessed already what we wanna do is they're going to be the comma. And so in this case, we're going to once again choose each occurrence of the delimiter because what it'll do is split this single column into three unique columns. If I only chose either the leftmost or the rightmost delimiter, that would give me two columns because it'll only split it one time. So let's go ahead and choose once again each occurrence of the delimiter. And so now we have again our city, our state, and our country. So if I go ahead and rename those, nice and easy right there, city, our state abbreviation, and our country. And now we have our three distinct columns that we can then use if we wanted to look at how to filter them down by those values. And so the next example we have on this table is our district column over here. Now for our district column, as you notice, the identifier here already has district within each cell, so we really don't need that in there for us to go ahead and look at as we want to um, look, you know, evaluate in our reports. So what we can do is we can split this column up by position because what we really don't need also is this pound symbol, this hashtag as well. What we only want is the actual district number. So if we right click on our district here and split column, this time we're gonna choose by positions. And once again, Power Query Editor, because it's so great at guessing what we want to do, it's going to look at the positions already set up there and say, you know what, we've gone ahead and counted and looked at the data in there, and we're going to guess that you want to split this by the 10 position, which means it's going to count 10 paces over, and it's going to look at the, the data within that cell and split it right on that pound sign and the number right after it. So if we go to hit OK, we'll notice that we now have 
our number of positions. And so we have seven, and then we have 21 as we go through, 30, and it's automatically doing that for us. And so now we can go ahead and just simply get rid of this district column because we don't need it, rename the column we just created to district by itself, and we're ready to go. Now, one of the things we can also tell that happened here automatically in the Power Query Editor is it's changed this column data type to a whole number. Well, we know that district is a unique identifier column. So because of that, we want to make sure that it's not a whole number, but it's going to be a text. And everything will be set up there, and we should be ready to go. So our next example that we're going to be looking at is we are going to split this a column here by delimiter and then another one by characters. And so for the first column that we're going to focus on here is our product column. And so what we have within this column are both product and a segment that the product belongs within. And so the one thing that we're going to use to split this column, the delimiter we're going to choose in this case is this pipe stem right down the middle. So let's select our column, right click, and we're going to choose to split this column by delimiter. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and have to use a custom delimiter. Power BI and Power Query Editor looked at the delimiters within here and said, well, there's a hyphen, but we know that's not the one we want to choose. So in this case, we are going to remove the hyphen and we're going to insert the pipe stem delimiter. And so now we're going to split this again at each occurrence or leftmost. In this case, it doesn't really matter, but we can go ahead and choose leftmost. And if we select OK, now we can see we have two distinct columns here that were once put together with that pipe stem delimiter. So we can go ahead and rename them to product and segment. And so now we have those values set up the exact way we want to see them. So if we want to put this into a table or into any chart, we can make sure we can filter down by the product specifically or the segment that the product belongs to specifically as well. All right, so staying on this table, we're also going to go ahead and look at the price column. Now, if you notice here in this column that is labeled price, we have each individual cell there showing the price for that product in US dollars. But the problem with this is if we want to go ahead and look at this for a report, it's not going to work because the USD label that's in there. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to split this column by a number of characters in order to get rid of the USD. And then after that, we could just simply change the data type on the column to a currency. So let's go ahead and split this column by number of characters. And what we're going to do is we're just simply going to count the number of characters in here for USD. There's three and there's a space that makes four. We're going to add in four. We're going to choose once as far left as possible because if we do that repeatedly, every four characters will split up our column and that's not what we want. And so now if we go ahead and select OK, we can now see that we parsed out this USD label from the actual price value itself. So we can get rid of our price, our USD here. And then we can change the data type of our price to a fixed decimal number to show us our currency. Change our title here, just simply show price, and we are ready to go. All right, so then let's keep on going on here and look at our next example where we look to split columns by, from digit to non-digit. And so the column that we're going to choose in this case is we're going to come on all the way over here to our territory column. And if what you see there in our territory column is we have our territories identified by a state abbreviation and a territory number. Now, in this case, we'll say we just don't need the state abbreviation because we already have a column that has a state abbreviation in it. So if we wanted to simply just remove that, state abbreviation from this territory column and just keep the numeric value, we can very easily do that as we right click and split column. But in this case, we're going to choose the digit or non-digit to digit. And when we did that, we now have a distinct column here with our state abbreviation, our non-digits, and another distinct column here with our territory Key labeled up. 
So we can go ahead and remove this column and just simply call this other one our territory. Very easy, very simple for us to do. And then finally, we have our very last example here. It's a little bit more detailed example and so a little bit more custom here is we are gonna go ahead and slit, split both of these columns up. We're gonna split this location slash operator column and then we're gonna split our aircraft type slash registration column. And what you'll notice inside the cells of each of these columns is that we have two different line values here with data for each. And so if we wanna split up these columns, we're gonna to have to use some special operators, some special characters in order for us to do that. And so I'm gonna select the entire column here. And if I right click on that and come over here to split column by delimiter, I'm gonna choose a custom delimiter. And notice that the Power Query editor has already identified that there is a custom delimiter set up there for us. And the custom delimiter it's shown there is a carriage return. Now a carriage return is when we take our value here from the end of a line and return it all the way back to the beginning of the line. Well, that's a good one that we wanna see. The next one we wanna see is we actually wanna break it off between both of these lines. So the next custom character we're gonna add in there is a line feed. And we do that using our pound symbol or our hashtag, open parentheses, L, F, close parentheses to represent our line feed. And so now if we go ahead and select okay, we can see that we've now split these columns by both carriage return and then line feed, which moves us down to the next line. I like to think about an old typewriter when I think of what a carriage return or line feed does. Does think of what a typewriter, you can move the actual type all the way back to the beginning on the far left, and then just scroll that paper uh, up so you can move down to the next line of text. So let's go ahead and rename these columns as well. So this first one is our location. The second is our operator. and we are good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and do it one more time. So to get a little bit more practice with that, we're gonna split up this aircraft type slash registration column. So we're gonna go right click, split column by delimiter. And once again, we are gonna do our custom delimiter, our carriage return and our line feed. And so now when I select okay, we can see everything's ready to go. All of our rows are now formatted in a really, really nice and neat way. Only thing we have left to do is change the column label there. So aircraft type and registration. And so now we are all set to go. Well, thank you for joining today and hopefully this video has helped you and giving you a better understanding and how you can, you can use the Power Query editor to split columns within your data set. Now, if you really like this video, make sure to give a, a like, a comment, and subscribe below to get more content, not just from myself, but from all of us here at Pragmatic Works. And until next time, I'll see you around.